We're back. We're talking about the Carolina Panthers. Nick, why don't you let us know for people just joining us now where we can find you? You can find me at P2W Fantasy on Twitter. All the content comes there. Uh, go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have uh, a set show as well. So uh, give give me a look. And uh, again, uh, thanks for having me on. Um, that 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 first session was was great. That first session was great. Good talk so far. Thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you who are just joining us now, um, we are live. We're talking about the um, Carolina Panthers. If I can keep my show doc in order here, talking about the Carolina Panthers and all the fantasy projections that we have for the fantasy relevant players. If you've been watching online, this may seem a little repetitive because we are filming this live. Um, you can catch us iedsports.com, youtube.com backslash iedsports, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Let's jump right into it. Sam Darnold. I think Sam Darnold is going to play better than he played in New York. I think we I, all think that. I also don't think that's Hopefully. necessarily saying very much. I have him at 550 attempts for 364 completions, 3,843 yards, 26 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. That is 15.5 pan- fantasy points per game. Steve, where's he going? Undrafted. I agree with that assessment. Nick, what do you think? <laughs> I I want this guy to succeed so bad. I do. I feel like he's been set up for failure his entire career with the bad coaching, the old lines, the wide receiver core has been bad. Defense is mm-hmm. bad. I mean, he he just had a, a rough go for a career. But you know, I'm 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 hope you know the other thing that's a concern. Never played in 13 games. He's never had better than a QB 25 season. I'm I'm hoping that in the perfect world, it's like the Ryan Tannehill situation where he escapes. Another system goes to a new one. He has the play action uh, ability with a new great running back and that he can have some upside here with the, the, the weapons in the system. So I'm rooting for him. My, my, my analogy, if he succeeds, is the Ryan Tannehill story. So we'll, we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I, 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 think I have that quarterback 20 this season. That's where my rankings put him, um, which means in two quarterback leagues, he will be an asset. He will be startable many times. Um if he can stick out all 17 games, he hasn't done that very much, and he had mono, so maybe he's going to get pink eye this season. I don't know if you miss an NFL game with that, but we will see with these little, little kid uh, injuries. So, Steve, what do you think? I mean, I would if I if I'm drafting quarterbacks super late in the draft, I would definitely give him a look see because DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. You know, and, and Robbie Anderson, they're all there. They're excellent pass catchers. They're gonna they're gonna provide a lot of upside for Darnold. And I, I you know, I think that and one thing that I saw that was a change in fantasy football calculator is actually because when I when we were doing the last um few teams, Sam Darnold was actually ranked. He was ranked near the bottom, and, and Justin Fields was not. Now Justin Fields is popping up, and we'll talk about him on another the show uh, and yeah so we gotta you know it, 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 he was there and now he's not so we'll, we'll see let's take a look at the running backs here there are two that I want to talk about Christian McCaffrey and Chubba Hubbard Christian McCaffrey um, I have him closer to 225 carries than to 300 this season we saw some wear and tear last year finally uh, catch up to him Hyper utilized, never had injury problems in the past, uh, to some surprise because of how highly he was used. 240 rushes gives him 960 rushing yards. I have him with 92 receptions for 745 receiving and 14 total touchdowns. 17.7 points per game puts him at running back four. So I, I, I knocked him down a whole bunch, still comes out at running back four. Steve, I think we all know where Chris McCaffrey's going this year. Yeah, he's 101. So, yeah. Now, nice. between four and five, I have a huge gap. So I have like the top four guys, a huge gap, and then five. So Chris McCaffrey is the bottom of what we would call tier one for floor. But I do obviously think he has that 101 upside. Nick, where do you have Chris McCaffrey next season? I have met running back one, and I know that's uh, like the consensus, but he's one of the few workhorse running backs left. Um, you, you look in the past at the second running back in the system, how they've been utilized even this past season. Mike Davis came back week nine, or no, McCaffrey came back week nine yes. after Mike Davis carried the load, and Mike Davis had six touches in week nine. So they like went back to not really using anybody else. So um, I think the volume's still going to be great, and I think he's, again, one of the few workhorses left. So 
yeah, he's, he's one for me. I love that you mentioned that, but also, don't you think they kind of learned their lesson by doing that? Because Christian McCaffrey went down again and missed a whole bunch of the rest of the season. And that's why I have to give Chubba Hubbard a couple more touches. Now we're going to talk. It's, it's not a lot, guys. This is not a lot. It's like a 70-30 split. But that's enough for me to bring Christian McCaffrey down to earth a little bit. That receiving upside is huge. He's a monster. You can take him 101. You can take him 104. But he should not be taken after any other position. He could be the second, third, or fourth running back, but he should not be taken after any wide receiver mm. quarterback on the board. Steve, do you agree with that assessment? I mean, it, 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 Christian McCaffrey um, and Alvin Kamara, it's, it, it, you know, they're just the top running backs. And, you know, you, we... It, the, you, you can't go wrong with who you choose it with the fir- within the first four picks. I love it. So we're going to move on to Chubba Hubbard. I think he's going to touch the ball. I, I have to agree they drafted him for a reason. Um, and that's about 130 carries and 30 receptions, about 700 yards total. Five touchdowns, 7.3 points per game. Lands him running back 38 in that Jamal Williams territory, I guess, as a running back four. So I don't have him very high, but I do think he has some upside. Also, if something were to happen to Christian McCaffrey, I think he should skyrocket up everyone's board. Chubb Hubbard is a guy who we thought was going to be a starting running back on a whole lot of teams. He went to not an ideal situation, but I think he's going to touch the football this season. Who agrees? I mean, it, it, there it, he is actually ranked. He's he's um, running back sixty six and going in the fourteenth round. So you know, I mean, I know you have him at running back thirty eight, but it, you know, if Christian McCaffrey does you know have a repeat season where he was injured as bad as he was, and, you know, Chuba Hubbard he really does have a chance to really step up and try to take the reins in this backfield. I, th- I think it's going to come down to how much are these guys competing. Um, because if they're chasing so many games, I think the touches rushing are going to go to McCaffrey. If they're if they're hanging in these games and their defense is improved and they're keeping things close, maybe they do have the ability to utilize Chub, uh, Chubba, who I who I actually was a little bit higher on than than um I think the consensus maybe was because they thought maybe he had a little bit of a dip in production. But if they can stay in games, I think they have the ability to use two running backs. If they're chasing a lot of games, I think it's going to be give the give the touches where they have to go. Yeah. I agree. Let's talk about some pass catchers here. We have DJ Moore. We have Robbie Anderson. We have Terrence Marshall. Uh, That's not very deep. So let's see how I have him statted out. Um, I think realistically, DJ Moore can have 120 targets, 68 receptions, 1,129 yards, and seven touchdowns. Again, I think the target share is going to be there. They're going to be passing the ball a bit this season. Um, They weren't very good last year. But I do think that when you have Sam Darnold at quarterback, you got to drop the efficiency. you got to drop the completion percentage. He likes throwing a lot of wild balls. And that's why I have a little bit of a dip in production here. 189 fantasy points gives him 11 points per game. Sits him at wide receiver 22. Oddly enough, wide receiver 22 is exactly where he finished the 2020 <laughs> season. Steve, where's he going right now? Yeah, um, Fantasy Football Calculator it has him in the same range as you. He's at 25. Um, wide receiver 25 going in the sixth round. Interesting. Nikki Biner selling DJ Moore. Just a quick note. Uh, this the, the audacity that he changes his jersey number when I have his jersey is just ridiculous, first of all. <laughs> so, so, second of all, I've always, I've always been a truther. It, it was weird this, this past season. Average depth of target, the, the yards per target went up. And I don't know if Teddy was really the guy for, you know, the deep all the time. So maybe there's some upside with Sam Darnold, who does have a plus arm. Um, But uh, you just got to hope for the touchdowns to go up in consistency. Um, Mm -hmm. Five games with 10 plus targets. And he had three games with 120 receiving yards. But then on the flip side, he had six games under 10 points. So if he can find the consistency and maybe be utilized all over the field like he should be, I'm, I'm all in on DJ Moore still, even with Sam Darnold there. Yeah, uh, he, he's going in the sixth round. So, you, you know, you're looking at him at that wide receiver two, wide receiver three flex range. You know, as a wide receiver three or a flex, I would take him there because there's so much upside there. I'm going to read a list of names and you tell me who you put DJ Moore behind. Cooper Cup, TJ Higgins, Tyler Lockett, Chase Claypool, OBJ, DJ Shark. I, I have him above all those guys. I have Personally. him above all those guys I, too, and that's the range he's going. So I do buy absolutely DJ Moore in outproducing his current ADP. Let's move on and talk about Robbie Anderson. 
Anderson caught 70% of his targets last season, most from the slot position. Uh, now he has Sam Darnold. I have Matt 125 targets, 75 receptions, and just a touch under 1,000 yards, 161 total points or 9.5 points per game. Lands him right around where Juice Landry was. Wide receiver 36 in the 2020 season. Steve, let's talk about where he's going now. Um, wide receiver 34 in the seventh round with the 11th pick. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say this right now. Like Robbie Anderson outproduced uh, DJ Moore last year. And now he, and now, um, now Robbie Anderson is getting Sam Darnold who, who um, Anderson had success with in, with the jets. I, I, you can make a strong case that, that this is a str- at wide receiver 34 in the seventh round. That is a, for me, that is a lot of value there because you're, because you're taking him as your wide receiver three flex with wide receiver one upside there. I do like that. However, when we look at his numbers from last season, 70% from the slot is about league average from the slot, believe it or not. I don't think Sam Darnold is that accurate at short range. We talked about DJ Moore going up because he does have an arm on him. Uh, but does Darnold have the accuracy to hit those quick slants, to hit those inside routes? It's a no for me. Robbie Anderson is going right about where I put him. I will not be selecting him very often in 2021. Nick, how do you feel about Robbie Anderson? Looking back when he was with Sam Darnold, 2019, he was third on the pecking order for targets. So it wasn't like he was the guy um, back when he was with Sam Darnold. I know you weren't saying that, um, but I think some people have this idea that he's going to be reunited with his quarterback. And it wasn't like he was the wide receiver one back then with him. Um, I think he was very, very... Uh, consistent this past season. If you look just straight down the the numbers line for fantasy, a lot of just like 13 point weeks, 14 point weeks. Um, I, I I'm just not just person. I'm just not a Robbie Anderson guy. I just, I, I think I, we've seen more uh, like meh out of him throughout his career than good. And even though he was very good last season, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not really into buying him. I, th- I think even at 34 or 33, wherever he's going, I still think there's guys that I'd probably reach on uh, ahead of him. Yeah, Guys in his range are going to be Najee Harris, James Conner, Cortland Sutton, all three of those I would take well yeah. over Robbie Anderson. Yeah, fair. Agreed. Agreed. Terrence Marshall is going to be a minor piece in this offense. I have him at 45 targets, 250 plus yards. I'm not interested. He's going undrafted. Does anyone have anything to add on Terrence Marshall? Nope. Let's turn the page then. Nick, uh, Dan Arnold. I that, that's a, that's another one. It, it kind of goes back to what you just said uh, about Marshall. I'm just I'm not super yeah. interested. I mean, I mean, what's what's he done with Kyler Murray? I, I know tight ends take a little bit, but man, another guy that either scores a touchdown or he does like almost nothing. So I'm I'm personally just out. Yeah, there were no targets to be had for me. I have about 22 receptions, 195 yards and three touchdowns. So again, Dan Arnold, not someone we're looking for. We're talking about the. Um, Carolina Panthers, we broke down all our fantasy prospects. Does anyone have anything to add on the Carolina Panthers? No. It'll it'll be interesting to see what sort of targets that uh, Marshall can grab from what was left from Curtis Samuel, or if those just continue to go to DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. That's the only – where are those targets going to go? I, I mean, I, I mean, Terrace Marshall was, was a highly touted wide receiver coming out of the draft. People, people – said that he should have gone higher so and he was drafted in what the third round somewhere is somewhere around there and third round in the third round there is expectation to produce and so so let's say that he is the wide receiver three for the for this offense you know he could he, he could have he'll definitely have value in in dynasty but we'll see I think a lot of value returning punts <laughs> this season <laughs> we will of course see that Thank you for joining us here today at ID Sports.